Hi everyone, so uh, today I really want to talk about a little bit of a more personal subject and I would love your feedback. Uh, so if you're comfortable, leave a comment. Um, you can also message me. Uh, I'm not sure if YouTube has a messaging app, but if you're watching this on uh, YouTube or LinkedIn, which are my primary social media platforms, uh, feel free to message me and I would love to hear your experiences on this. But I really wanted to know, for those of you who have hearing loss, what is your insecurities in regards to that? So for me, my voice uh, has always been a big insecurity of mine. That feeling of, uh, you know, having to listen to my voice and say, oh no, you know, it's, it's too soft, it's, too loud, it kind of fades in and out, um, that, and it just doesn't uh, sound good, you know, sometimes I feel like it's not exciting enough, uh, especially compared to, like, some of the speakers that I uh, watch on YouTube or, or listen to on webinars, they have, you know, a lot more excitement in their voice, and then mine is, you know, kind of flat level and monotone, it, it sounds sad. And, you know, I've had uh, somebody that was close to tell me that my voice sounded like I was crying. And that, that of course, uh, made me feel even more insecure about it. So doing these YouTube videos is a very big step for me, uh, mainly because I don't really like the way my voice sounds. And I, I decided to kind of take the leap because I've been writing for a while, I've been blogging for a while, uh, mainly on Medium, and, you know, I've gotten some interest there, but I am hiding myself in a way, you know, I can write, I don't have to show myself, nobody can hear the way I sound, nobody can see the way I look, uh, and whatever, and it's just a way to kind of have more privacy, but also to, that I'm hiding behind that. Um, and sometimes I feel like I can be more vulnerable there just because you're not seeing who I am. Uh, you're only reading the words on the paper and not hearing what I say. I can correct and edit anything, you know, much more so than I can hear. Yes, I can redo a video, but that doesn't mean that I'll, that I won't slip up. So my voice is a big, uh, source of insecurity for me and it's something that I've been working to overcome and then also volume like uh, am I too hot too loud am I too quiet you know I, it's really hard to find that middle ground uh, and sometimes I, f I feel like I'm talking normally and everybody's like speak up I can't hear you and then other times if I'm getting excited or I'm telling a story then everybody's like quiet down you're speaking too loud and it can be very hard for me to find that you know middle ground as to where I'm loud enough so people can hear me but also quiet enough to not attract the attention of everybody in the room and then just the way that my voice sounds uh, I read a ton I've always been a very big reader um, more so than watching TV or, or videos or anything like that so I'll read words um, and then I'll use words, but I don't actually know how they pronounce, how to pronounce them. And then also since I can't hear softer sounds like S's, uh, you know, S, uh, S, my SH, I sometimes will not add them in conversation. And um, unless I'm being, you know, very deliberate about it, and, and conscientious, my speech can get a little sloppy just in the way that I pronounce things or I'm dropping certain syllables off the words, uh, not saying all my consonants correctly. So it can be a source of insecurity for me. And then also like growing up, uh, especially in high school and in college, I would not show my hearing aids. I would never wear my hair up. Um, I would always keep them 
my hair down over my ears so, no, so that no one could uh, see that I had hearing aids. And this is really in relation to being bullied uh, when I was a kid because that was the target, was my hearing aids and uh, all the, the assistive listening device, uh, the loop and the box um, around. So it's something that I learned to hide and learn to hide my hearing loss and, you know, try and make it uh, in the world just, you know, through sheer force of will uh, and not bring attention to myself because I'm kind of an in introvert anyway, even though I'm doing these videos. I am quite a, uh, quite a bit an introvert and you know, I don't really like being the one to break break the ice or meet new people. Though if I do get to know you, I'll, I'll talk all day if I'm, if I'm comfortable with you. Um, I, I can be a talker, but uh, just, you know, especially being in the, a big group of people, I tend to be the one that's always, you know, fading, stand, fading back, staring on the sideline. And, you know, I don't like drawing attention to myself. And this is, you probably can't hear it, but it's kind of very noisy here with trucks and, and planes, uh, so just trying to get focused. But yeah, those are my you know, deaf insecurities. And then I was with someone that uh, would criticize me a lot for that or was not empathetic, um, told, often told me that it, so it sounded like I was crying when I was talking, uh, especially when I would try and do like radio spots uh, when I was working as a chiropractor or you know, he would not uh, look at me when I was when he was talking to me and then get annoyed when I asked him to repeat what he said. So all of these things can build up your sense of insecurities. And for a lot of us uh, who have hearing loss, we experience some level of this on a daily basis. Um, you know, it could be your, uh, the people that are close to you, your, your family, your friends, uh, a significant other, and the criticism can come from these people that are not understanding or compassionate, or it could be in the workplace, um, and that is a lot of times what happens. It's just a lot of bullying uh, done in the workplace uh, for some reason. Even though we get to be adults, uh, a lot of us don't ever let go of that high school mentality of the cliques and and the striving to be popular and, and putting others down who don't kind of fit that mold. Uh, so a lot of bullying can happen in the workplace where people are not willing to repeat themselves or alter the method of communication uh, so that someone else can understand them or you know, they cover their lips when they're talking or look away or get annoyed um, when other people ask them to repeat things multiple times or they don't want to write things down. And I understand it can be annoying and maybe you don't want to break up the flow of how you normally talk, but empathy goes a long way and it doesn't cost you anything to repeat things or to write something down. You know, uh, even take out your phone and text. I can't show you my phone because I'm using my phone while doing this video, but uh, you know, uh, texting or just even typing it on your screen is a way that a lot of people, of deaf people, uh, communicate actually um, if they're not doing sign. So, yeah, it doesn't hurt you and it can go a long way to making other people feel included. You know, put yourself in their shoes. Imagine that you're with uh, someone and they, that is bilingual and they come across uh, some of their friends who speak their native, lang their native language or the second language that they speak and you're with them and you don't speak that language but they're all conversing in that language and how do you feel? You know, like 
standing there twiddling your thumb, this kind of deal. And it can be very frustrating, it can be very isolating, and you often feel like you're alone. Well, people that have a hearing loss also feel that way, especially in a group, uh, because there's usually multiple conversations going on, multiple people talking at once, a lot of people talking over each other, and it can be very difficult to follow, very difficult to hear. You can't follow everybody's lips when they're all talking at once. Um, everything kind of blends together and becomes a jumble, and pretty soon you're just off in your own little world in your head uh, because you can't follow what's going on, and you can't understand what anybody else is saying, and then you're just standing there, you know, trying to pretend like you heard everything or uh, off daydreaming and hoping that no one asks you a question because you have no clue what is going on, especially if you're in a bar or a nightclub or a restaurant that's noisy and there's a lot of background noise. So, yeah, just let me know. You know, I'd love to know what your insecurities are if you have hearing loss, um, what your struggles have been. Uh, comment if you feel comfortable. Uh, message me if you're on one of the social platforms that I'm going to post this on. You should do you, uh, Facebook and LinkedIn in addition to YouTube. So feel, feel free to message me. I spent a long time not knowing anybody else that had hearing loss. So I love hearing your experiences and getting to know all of you. And I also want to say this. Everybody is at a different stage uh, in regards to their journey with hearing loss. And it, I've only been speaking out about it for a couple of years. And it took me a long time to really be comfortable. And some of that might be age. You know, as I've gotten older, I'm more comfortable with who I am. Uh, but it took me a long time. So don't feel like you have to be this big advocate, especially if you're an introvert. I'm a big introvert. Uh, you have to be this big advocate for yourself and always, you know, demand proper communication and or resources. You know, every, everybody's in a different situation. Um, you know, especially if you're in a situation where you've been hiding your hearing loss and then you might feel like it might cost you your job or uh, cost you your some of your friends or, or different opportunities, you know, don't, don't put yourself at a, at a disadvantage um, by not getting the information that you need and just kind of like pretending and laughing it off when you didn't actually hear what has been said. But at the same time, don't feel like if you're in a group of people, you have to be like, oh no, I didn't hear that, you know, stop and repeat, or um, I'm hard of hearing, or I'm, I'm deaf or whatever, because everybody's had a different uh, stage in their hearing loss journey. You are not letting down, you know, all of the deaf and hard of hearing community if you don't speak up for yourself. I just want to put that right out there. You are not letting down all of the deaf and hard of hearing community if, you know, you're not betraying the rights that everyone else uh, in the past a generation fought for, if you don't put your hand up and stop the speaker, whoever is speaking, and ask them to repeat it. You know, it's okay. Let go of that burden. Don't put that pressure on yourself. Feel free to go to the person later on and talk to them quietly or ask a friend what's going on or get the note in some other way. Uh, like I said, just be comfortable with where you are and in your hearing loss journey and know that there may come a time when you're more comfortable. If you're not comfortable with it, um, there may be come a time, there may come a time where you are more willing to advocate for yourself and you feel comfortable doing so. Uh, but just accept where you are. It's okay. It really is. So that's pretty much all I wanted to share. I'd love to hear uh, all of your experiences. Uh, if you're enjoying the videos or if you want me to uh, 
touch on a different topic, uh, like, comment, su subscribe. I've been talking a lot about social issues, um, so I'm going to delve more in, the, in future videos on some of the more uh, medical and health related issues in relation to hearing loss. Um, I want to talk about listening fatigue with all of you. I want to talk about touch on the news, uh, sudden hearing loss, and a tinnitus. That's a huge one for me, is tinnitus, because I struggle with it. Uh, so I will be touching on those different topics in the future, so let me know if there is a topic that you want me to cover. And like, comment, subscribe, and yeah, just I hope to hear from all of you, and I will talk to you soon. Bye.